Hey, Oregon fans. Good evening out there. Rob Mosley here with GoDucks.com. It's another Thursday, which means another edition of Happy Hour with the Ducks. Nice to see y'all. Thank you all for joining us. It's beautiful in Eugene today. The weather's taking a turn, starting to feel like summer a little bit more and more every day. So hopefully everybody's getting the most out of that, uh, getting outside and, and enjoying yourselves. When you do so, please be smart. I know there's some situations where wearing a mask makes a lot of sense. So if you're able to do that, um, anything to, to stay safe, stay healthy. Uh, as we get closer to the fall, looking forward to, to having college athletics again. Uh, we want to do everything we can to make that possible. So hopefully everybody's playing your part. Summer means uh, we're, we're at the end of the academic calendar. Last week was the final week of the spring quarter at the University of Oregon. And so we, all week we've been celebrating graduation uh, on GoDucks.com, the website, on our social media channels. And we're going to do that again tonight in this edition of Happy Hour with the Ducks. We've been talking to primarily with coaches and administrators uh, in this show, but tonight we have three student athletes who all are part of the U University of Oregon class of 2020, Satu Savali from women's basketball, Verone McKinley with football, Lily Garvins with acrobatics and tumbling, all did big things uh, at the University of Oregon. Verone, uh, still a couple more years left to do big things, um, but all have big <laughs> futures ahead of them as well. Um, we're really proud of all three of these kids, and I uh, just want to get a chance to catch up with all three and talk about graduating um, earning their diplomas, uh, and, and moving on with the next steps of their lives. Um, so thank you all for tuning in, and, and we're looking forward to what I'm sure is going to be a 30, 30 or 40 minutes is going to fly by here because we've got a lot of ground to cover with each of these student athletes. So thanks again for all you watching. Thanks again to, to the three of you for joining us tonight. Um, and we'll start with Satu Sabli, who uh, has been drafted by the Dallas Wings of the WNBA. She also recently signed a contract uh, to play overseas in Istanbul, Turkey. Uh, so congratulations <laughs> on that. Uh, how are you doing? And how does it feel to be to be uh, in the class of 2020 for the University of Oregon? Uh, I mean, I'm doing good. You know, I'm in Dallas already and I'm feeling good too. I'm so just happy that uh, I'm going to get my degree. And it's really, you know, it's just making me really proud. Yeah, it's, it's something to be proud of because it's quite an accomplishment. And you, you did it in three years. Um, you know, you, mm -hmm. you've probably known all along, given your age group, that you'd have the chance to potentially uh, enter the WNBA draft pool after three years. Mm -hmm. So how much was that mm -hmm. on your mind as you were scheduling classes and, and working out your academic load? And, and how much of a challenge was it to finish in that three-year window? Uh, you're talking to somebody, me, who, who needed more than four years. I, I needed almost a full <laughs> five to finish my undergraduate. So. What was the process of, of getting it in three years and, and how difficult was that? You know, my first year, I didn't even think about leaving after three years. So I was like, okay, I'll do a major, I'll do a minor. Um, and then it was like, oh my God, last year I was talking to coach and we were just like, okay, well, if I would want to leave next year, I need to get my courses ready. So I had to take like, I think 24 credits last summer and it was it was a hustle so i had to get like an extra permission to get like uh to take extra credits um extra classes so it was it was crazy and then now i still have to take two more summer sessions but then i'm done so i got my minor before i got my major and i was like oh my god i could have saved so much time but it's still good that i did it <laughs> <laughs> now you studied general social science, crime law and society. That was your major. Your minor was in legal studies. So yeah. why did those subjects, what attracted you about that subject matter? I'm sure you, you've always mm -hmm. been thinking of, of pro basketball as your first career step, but potentially beyond yeah. basketball. Why did those subjects attract you and, and what did you enjoy about studying them? You know, I, my plans are still going to law school once I'm done um, with college or once I'm done playing in Europe and only playing in WNBA. And I thought, you know, studying legal studies will give me a good ground. I didn't know a lot about American law and I just wanted to learn it. And then I really wanted to learn a lot about social inequalities, economic inequalities. And this was like the perfect major to do so because I wanted to know more what kind of, I don't know, institutional um problems we have all over the world and yeah general social science was just perfect for me and i had to switch from international studies because i wouldn't wouldn't have been able to finish that in three years with the minor gotcha we did have a question submitted by one of our fans paul who wanted to know kind of and you refer to this you're someone who who has really taken advantage of your platform to speak about out about issues that are important to you 
obviously there's a lot going on in our society right now since, you know, particularly since the George Floyd tragedy in, in Minneapolis. Um, and what has been the process for you of, of not being afraid to step out and use your platform and, and trying to have a voice that, that goes way beyond basketball? Mm -hmm. Thanks, Paul, for the question. Um, it's been really important to me to use my platform. It wasn't always easy, and I'm still on the side. I know that I'm still learning. I don't know everything. I'm not, you know, no one is almighty. No one knows everything, but I just still think that it's really to uh, really important to speak up. It's really important to be on the right side of history and with what's going on right now. It has been happening for years, centuries, and now we're just at a good time so public and that there's such a big wave of people supporting that movement. And yeah, really, I just want to stand on the right side and um, raise my voice because it's really important and people listen to athletes. We're filming this on a Thursday, and for all you watching live, thank you. For anybody who's tuned in to watch a replay, we're, we're talking on a Thursday evening. Tomorrow is June 19th. Juneteenth, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, for the black community in America is a major holiday to celebrate um, uh, freeing the slaves at the end of the Civil War. And, um, and I just wonder about your perspective on what that holiday means to you, what this weekend means to you. I know um, for a lot of people in the black community, it's a celebration. Um, mm -hmm. I, I have to admit, and I'm almost embarrassed to admit that it wasn't until the last three or four years that I really even um, became aware of, of the, how meaningful this date was. Mm -hmm. Um, what's been on your mind as this as Friday Juneteenth uh, approaches and, and this weekend approaches? You know, I think it's a reminder of history and it can be viewed as the second Independence Day of America because the slaves, uh, slaves were freed. But I also think that it is still a reminder that there are a lot of problems going on and that things like or laws like the 13th Amendment they just allowed slavery in a different form. So celebrating that in, is good and re you know, like just remembering the history behind it. I think that's really important. And it's not bad if people didn't even know about that before, but it's important to educate yourself and it's important to, important to learn about it. So maybe even after this video, you go to YouTube and look up what Juneteenth really means. I mean, it has been a long history of slavery and by, with that day, it was officially ended. Yeah, you, you referred to the 13th Amendment, and if anybody hasn't gone to Netflix to watch 13th, um, to, to educate yourself on kind of what Satu was just hinting at and kind of how the, the systemic problem um, stemming from slavery, um, there, there's still a legacy there that continues up to this day, uh, unfortunately, in this country. So um, I feel like we could talk about this for, for a couple hours with you, but we, I do want to make sure we cover a lot of ground. We did have a question from Kayla. Who wanted to know, just mm -hmm. given sort of how um, everything that's going on uh, in, across the country these days, we've got a pandemic going on. Um, we do have this protest movement. So the attention of the country mm -hmm. is, is justifiably on that as well. But it looks like the WNBA season is going to get going and you're starting to get a sense of what the format is going to look like. I'm sure you're excited mm -hmm. as a rookie to get going. But on the other hand, there is all this, uh, th these other th issues to address. So Kayla was wondering just what's it like for you right now to kind of wrap your mind and refocus on, on playing for the, your mm -hmm. WNBA team. Yeah, I mean, first of all, as a rookie, I'm super excited. I can't wait to play and get out there. It's going to be a tough schedule, but I'm excited. So that comes first. And then I really think that we still have to use our platforms to raise awareness and to demand justice for people still like Breonna Taylor. But it is also um, like the WNBA is really doing a great job of involving our concerns about that, involving concerns about COVID, um, involving concerns about social justice. And we'll have, you know, like a media platform there where we can record podcasts or videos or get more knowledge like they will try to not have us too isolated and distance from what is going on and what is really important to the majority of the people because the majority of the people in the league are black as well as in the nba but i'm excited yeah I, I, <laughs> oh no absolutely i'm sure that's the first reaction um i don't want to dwell too much on uh the the, the early the, the interrupted uh, final college season you had, but you, yeah, has that wound healed at all? Um, you know, not being able no. to play out the NCAA tournament with, the, with your teammates and with the Oregon Ducks? You know, I don't think it ever will. It's like I've kind of accepted it, but 
um, in my in my mind, it's still a what if, what would have been. I, we were so excited to come back to Eugene and hopefully celebrate our win. You know, we were talking to fans about it. We were talking to our families about it. And it was just really painful when that text from coach came and it's like, all right, it's over. But I mean, at this point, I just want to thank everyone that has been um, with us, you know, since day one or at the last day, sold out gyms. It has been an amazing journey. And I can really say that I had the best experience at Oregon. And I mean, my senior, junior and I, that was the highlight of it all. And I'm so happy that we had that last moment at Matthew Knight. Um, really uh, crazy moments. <laughs> yeah, that, that last home weekend is, I think, one that, that folks won't soon forget. You guys just had so much going on with your season um, mm -hmm. and, and so many hurdles in front of you and, and just the the triumphs that you enjoyed, but the tragedies you, that you endured too, I just, it made it a remarkable story. And um, you, your guys is a team that I think you cemented your legacy in, in Oregon athletics, regardless of, of what happened, um, mm -hmm. it, whatever would have happened in the NCAA tournament. So um, yeah, you did have a little bit of news this week too, in terms of um, where you'll be playing in Europe, as we hinted earlier, what all goes into a decision like that, determining where, where you're gonna play once the WNBA season is over? Um, so I had the option, you know, playing in either China, Russia or Turkey. And I, for my first year, I just wanted to be in a comfortable position. I wanted to have a coach that wants to develop me. And I thought that Turkey was the perfect fit, like Fran Abacha, he's a Spanish coach. It's close to home, not like here in Oregon. I mean, my flight home would be like 13 hours and in Turkey it's like two, two and a half. And it's it's gonna be cool for me to see my family a lot more often. But um, I think Turkey, you know, Istanbul is a great city who has never been a Turkey. It's an amazing country and I'm so excited to just play there. But, you know, and money talks too, you know, <laughs> we, <laughs> we gotta get our money. So that's why I'm playing. Don't apologize for that. Don't nope. apologize for that. Yeah, I, as someone, I've done a little bit of traveling, but not a ton. I, one thing I'm, I'm so envious of is just, I mean, you just have this worldliness that uh, that I really envy. Just the places you've been, you know, the, all the people you've gotten to meet and the things you've gotten to see. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, I, there's definitely some jealousy there. So we'll be living vicariously through you as you play uh, your your season in WNBA, but but overseas as well. Thanks a ton for joining us, and, and best of luck with everything here in the in the coming weeks and months. Thank you so much. <laughs> awesome, and congrats again on graduating. Again, that's what we're celebrating today. We've got. We've got three student athletes who finished their degrees at the University of Oregon, part of the class of 2020. Let's bring in Verone McKinley now. Now you've got a little bit to go, a little bit of work to do before you actually complete your degree. I think it'll be fall uh, this year, um, at the end of this year, at the end of this football season when you'll finish your degree. But we should note that that still means you'll basically have been on campus for two full years and one quarter when you'll finish your degree. And so that's about half the time it took, again, uh, me to, to finish my degree. So a uh, hat tip to you and, and kudos on that. Congratulations. Um, and, and can you talk us through um, just what it took to, to finish on that sort of a timeline? Having some trouble with uh, with Verone's audio here, so let me check in with our production here. Um, Verone's a pol political science major, but he also wants to get into broadcasting. Um, so he's a, he's a he's a guy who has a lot of different interests that he's tried to explore uh, during his time on campus, um, and, and one day hopes to be one of those guys who's on first take or a show like that or, or broadcasting. Uh, from games as well. So um, that's experience. Uh, fortunately, as someone who works in our com communications office, uh, we can help with. But So let's get back to Verone in a minute. We'll, we'll see if we can work out those problems. Luckily, we have Lily Garvin's. Er, Verone, can you hear me okay now? Yeah, I had it muted. Oh, My th bad. There you are. Hey, come on. We've had enough Zooms uh, these days that you, you've, you've got to have learned to take yourself off mute before by this time, right? Oh, man, yeah. But um, oh, what was your question? Um, so it's just just the timeline of finishing in, in two and a half years 
was that a, was it a goal specifically to finish that fast and and what was the process of getting all your work done uh definitely was one of my goals uh, i remember when i first came in i told my academic advisor janine that i wanted to just you know get done i wanted to be done as quick as possible mm -hmm. so that way i could have options so when it came down to it i just had to stack some some classes in the winter and the spring and the summer and then not as much during football season but all the rest of the terms just stack as many classes as possible and just so i could be able to to have those options, whether that was leave early and go to the NFL or go into the workforce, I just, I'm able to do it as quick as possible. So how'd you, like I said, broadcasting is something you're interested in a career goal, but why did you gravitate to political science as well? And, and what, did, what have you enjoyed about that track of study? A political science, it allowed me to kind of like focus on everything. It has like a journalism piece to it, but as well as a political side to it. And you get to analyze a lot of different scenarios of what's going on in the world. And so for me, wanting to kind of be a reporter and an uh, analyst and a broadcaster, I have the opportunity to be able to have a broader range. I can do politics. I can do sports. I can do pop culture. And just be able to do multiple things instead of just sports. So that's why I gravitated more towards that. As well as even if I want to go and be a politician or like a lawyer, it just helps me in so many different fields rather than just journalism. So. That's awesome. You know, and it, you know, some guys go to campus and get to campus and say, Hey, I'm going to the NFL. So that, you know, that's my first priority, but you know, so it's, it's, you know, it's, it's great to hear. Um, and, and we know there's a lot of guys with this mindset that say that I, I just don't just define myself as a football player. I define myself uh, in a lot of different ways. So, so kudos to that. So you're going to have some, some time on campus, um, theoretically, um, but once you're done with your undergraduate degree. So do you, do you plan for a master's uh, degree program at that point? Yes, sir. I uh, prepare for a master's and just, you know, getting ready for the NFL. If I can leave early and have a spectacular season this upcoming year and be able to leave, that'd be great. But if I have to come back and everything like that, then I'll just start my master's and continue working and getting better and preparing for the next season. Yeah, it, it's going to be really exciting to watch your, the defense that you're coming back to. And you guys got a lot of pieces to sort through in the secondary. You guys got a lot of a lot of veteran faces, a lot of experienced guys, a lot of guys who've played a lot of good football. Just what's it like? Um, and I know you guys are just starting to kind of trickle back into town in waves and get back into workouts. And um, I think you're 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 in your early isolation period as you've just gotten back to Eugene before you actually get back into workouts. But uh, you know when you're on Zoom meetings, position meetings, and you see all those faces and all that talent and all that experienced guy, those experienced guys. What's the level of of excitement for you guys as a secondary and then as a defense as you look ahead toward the 2020 fall? Oh, we're, we're just excited. Uh, we had a really good first year under the new defense, and we're just excited to kind of piece that even more together and have an even better year, too. We have a lot of guys coming back, a lot of guys that are first who can play a lot of different positions and do a lot of different things. So it'll it'll be an exciting year. I think we'll be better than last year, of course, and just, you know, we just make each other better. So. It, it, is it always friendly competition? Because you're going – you're going head to head for reps with guys that you've you've competed with for a couple of years now, and guys who are some of your best friends. I know. Um, so, what are those relationships like? What's that dynamic like when you know you guys are close buddies, but then you're also you know fighting tooth and nail to try to be the guys who who know the most, and then once workouts start, can prove yourselves and, and earn reps. Um, well, that's that's what makes it fun. Off the field, we're all friends. We play video games and hang out together and eat and do all of that. But we're on the field. We know it's all. It's a business and it's, it's competition. It's all friendly, but everybody wants to get paid. Everybody wants to have those interceptions, make all the tackles, create all the, four, the turnovers they can. So it's just we all want to make those plays. So it just drives that competitive nature. And it makes everybody better. It makes you – you want to be the guy. You want to be playing. So if you want to be playing, you got to make plays. So. I, I asked this of Satu as well. Um, tomorrow coming up is, is Juneteenth. And – um, again, you know, for, for somebody in my shoes who only became aware of that term in the last three, four, five years, and, and it has really been learning even just this year, just how, what the significance of that is and how much that resonates with the black community. Um, any thoughts for you personally on, on what, um, the holiday means, what the significance of this weekend is, um, and to you and, and to your family, uh, at all as it comes up? Well, for me, it's, it's a little, it's bigger especially with it being a texas holiday it's a holiday for texas because um it was when the slaves finally got freed the gaysburg address had been in 1863 especially with everything going on i definitely think it's a time for celebrating just everybody come together and just celebrate 
if for anybody who was like me and didn't didn't know the history, it was Galveston, Texas, where a, a major general from the Union Army showed up in 1865 to say the Civil War was over uh, and slaves were freed. Obviously, um, the, the, the legacy of, of some of that still lingers on, as we were just discussing earlier. Um, and so there's still a lot of hurdles to overcome. But uh, as you say, a, a celebratory day um, for the black community. And yeah, this is a different kind of Juneteenth, I imagine, given everything that's going on you know, in the wake of the, 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 the killing of George Floyd and, and the protest movement. Um, what, just what kind of thoughts have gone through your mind the last few weeks, the last couple of months as you've watched that um, kind of sweep the country? Um, just, just to be vocal and to speak out and just educate myself and others who have questions or just don't really understand. Um, I don't think it's a time where we should attack one another or anything like that. I think we should try to educate everybody and all become on the same page to help with the change. It's, it's going to take everybody, not just one person, not just one race. So as long as we come together and we keep educating each other, it's like a food chain. Everybody keeps learning and we just keep getting better. And I think the progression will help to increase the change. It, the conversations I have with, with student athletes around this subject and around um, this time, getting involved and voting really seems to be the action item that, you know, everybody feels like, hey, this is something I can do that will really make a difference. Would you say there's a, a different sense of awareness uh, about the importance of voting, um, you know, maybe among among folks that you know around your age this year that, that might not have um, – been the case um, in previous elections or even just a few weeks ago before before this subject really grabbed the nation's attention? Uh, definitely. I guess I can speak kind of for the team itself. I, I'm pretty sure everybody on our team is going to vote. Uh, we realize that's that's going to be part of the change, everybody voting. And without, I mean, if you look at college football teams all across the nation, that's easily 100 guys right there. So if you think of all the Division One schools there are and take all those guys and voting, that's the change right there. So it's going to take everybody. And like I said, the voting is a major, major step in it, but it's going to take more than just voting as well. We're going to have to increase the action, but I think voting is a big, big step into it, especially with the past elections, not many people voting and no voting is almost like not doing anything at all. So. Yeah. As hard as it is to stomach, sometimes I try to tell myself I'd, I'd rather have somebody vote for a different candidate than I'm voting for than to not vote at all because you, you, you need you, everybody needs to participate you know even if the person I voted for doesn't win I'd rather have everyone participate and you think that message has gotten across throughout the team I think it has coach Christian Ball's done a good job of uh, letting us know when those dates are and when everybody needs to have their votes submitted and everything like that so our coach has done a great job of making sure that we're aware and being informed as well as themselves so I think I think we're taking a good step here on the football team that's great to hear. And for you personally, as you start to eye getting back into workouts with your teammates, just what's your level of anticipation right now to, to get out of this isolation period safely and healthy and, and get back working out? Man, I'm, I'm excited. Um, I've been working out since the quarantine all started, and I feel I'm ready to go, ready to run, ready to lift, ready to you know go back out there and make plays and get back into the, the swing of just the regular schedule. Um, I, I mean, it's good to be back around some of my teammates. I haven't seen all of them, but I've seen – some of them. So it's good to be back around them and just, you know, ready to go. We're locked in and we're poised to have another good year and just build up on what we did last year and this, the four spring practices we had. Yeah, you see the video here of some workouts. So imagine those guys all wearing face coverings and, and uh, in slightly smaller groups and trying to keep social distance. And that's a, that's a sense of, what, of what's going on uh, now and what Verona is about to join. So uh, uh, good luck once those uh, get going and congratulations again on being part of the class of 2020. You got to take care of business now in the fall. No pressure. Don't, uh, you know, don't leave us hanging now. <laughs> I've knocked out most of the hard stuff, so it's, it's pretty downhill from here. That's awesome. Well, congrats again. Um, and thanks for joining us. Thanks for giving us a little bit of your time, Verone, and, uh, and best of luck with everything. And we'll, we'll bring in now Lily Garvins from Acrobatics and Tumbling. Now, Verone's still got some school left. He's got a football season left to play. Satu has some school left this summer. Um, and she has yet to get uh, really uh, into the WNBA season. You are a career woman now after, uh, after yeah. finishing your academic work at uh, the University of, University of Oregon, excuse me, easy for me to say. T tell all the fans out there um, what you've been doing the last few months um, and how you're putting your degree to work. Yeah, so I actually graduated in March, right when everything kind of started. Um, you know, with the virus um, going downhill. And so 
when that all happened and our season got canceled, um, I decided to go home um, and quarantine at home with my family. And then I was like, all right, I guess I can start looking for something to do with this newfound free time I have. I'm graduated. Um, unfortunately, my season is canceled. And so I uh, started looking into um, organizing positions, um, political organizing positions. Um, I majored in sociology and psychology, and I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do with that, but I knew that I was interested in politics and what I could do. And so I decided that I would try out organizing. So um, since March, I have been working with Organizing Together 2020, um, which has an operation in the five battleground states. And I've been digitally recruiting volunteers and getting people signed up to vote and um, getting them registered to vote by mail. And so that is what I've been doing from home for the past three months. Yeah, I, met in, I mentioned you putting your degree to work, but it is degrees. You were a double major. So what, how yeah. much, just how much did you have to juggle um, in, in trying to, to do a double major, also compete as a student athlete, presumably also have some semblance of a personal life as well? Um, just what was that challenge like of, in terms of time management and all the rest? Um, well, it started out with just a psychology degree, and I, you know, I was just a normal student athlete. And then I realized um, as I took more sociology classes, I was like, oh, I want to minor in this. And then I eventually realized that I was um, honestly more passionate about that subject than um, my first degree. And so I went to to Jennifer Jackson, my academic advisor, and asked if we could make it happen. And she said yes. And I had the support of the JQuest staff and um, lots of hard work. But um, I'm very happy that I decided to add that second major because I do feel like that education has um, really, really helped me um, since graduating. Yeah, that's a couple of you now that have mentioned advisors and tutors you've had at the JQuest staff. And they don't get enough credit, the, just the, the investment that they put in and the commitment to the, the student athlete experience for you guys. So uh, thank you for, for mentioning that because um, there are some folks behind the scenes who really put in a ton of time and effort to, to help every student athlete at, at the University of Oregon succeed. So uh, given that you've gone into organizing and, and with an eye towards the, the election coming up in November, just how interesting a time has it been these last few weeks to see the, the social justice movement just kind of galvanize the nation. Has the tone of conversations you've been having changed? Do you, do you sense more energy, more enthusiasm? Just what's it been like um, as somebody who has been thinking about the election for all along to now see yeah. uh, presumably a lot more attention on it from everyone else? Yeah, so I've definitely felt the conversation change. And I think that this election was already unique. Um, people were already pretty fired up about it. And just in the past few weeks, um, the conversations I'm having, um, people are hurting, but they are also taking that anger and they want to turn it into something. Um, so they're just, they're ready to do whatever they can. Um, and so, you know, as the election gets closer, people are even more fired up to do whatever they can um, to help. So I have definitely felt a change in conversations um, and it's, it's giving me a lot of hope. That's great to hear because it's, you know, it's the, it's the younger generations that are obviously going to affect a lot of the change that, that folks want to see. So it's, it's, it's got to be, words have to become actions, that's for sure. Um, now, now, switching to, the, to, to your sport, to acrobatics and tumbling, they got some big news yesterday uh, in terms of being granted emerging sports status uh, by the NCAA. Uh, right now, the, the, the championship is sponsored by the NCATA, the National Collegiate um, Acrobatics and Tumbling Association. But uh, this is something that I think the sport has, has long been chasing. Um, and as of August, it'll be an NCAA sport, which means you got to abide by NCAA compliance rules and academic eligibility issues and all those rules. But it also means that if you can get a few more teams under the umbrella, um, this can be an NCAA championship sport. Just, just for the sport itself, what's your sense of, of the significance of, of yesterday's news? Um, this is something that we've been waiting for and hoping for and working for for years, so it's super exciting. Um, basically, what can happen now is we have been wait. A lot of schools um, are very excited about this sport um, to provide women with new opportunities to um, be involved in college athletics, and we think that they are most likely waiting for this next step for this emerging sports status by the NCAA in Division I. Um, so the hope is that we'll get a lot of new um, people fired up and ready to um, join. And so once we get more schools, then um, 
the next step will be even e easier to obtain. Talking with 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 Keenan Wong, the coach uh, at Oregon, and, and some of the administrators about the news yesterday. Um, and one of my questions was, okay, is this going to mean a lot of changes for the program in terms of those rules you have to abide now and, and the eligibility questions and things like that? And, and they said, no, we've been kind of operating as if we were an NCAA sport all along so that this would be a smooth transition. Do you have any perspective on that? Did it feel like, I mean, did you guys feel any different than any of the other sports? Um, no, Coach Keenan is exactly right. We have been treated um, exactly the same as the other sports. We've been able to access all of the um, treatment centers, you know, the JQA. We've been given all of the same opportunities as everybody else. We are we are able to have scholarships. Um, we still abide by all of the rules. So it has really um, felt like we were already NCAA. And I don't know if that goes for all the schools, but that's something very special about Oregon. Um, and I think this transition is going to be very smooth, but either way, people are very excited about this news. That's awesome. Now, again, a graduation uh, commencement is a Saturday of this week. Again, we're, we're, we're filming this on a Thursday. Um, it's Saturday of this week. Um, is it a little bittersweet to know that there's a commencement coming up and you know you, you won't have the normal ceremony um, I don't know if you were you were thinking that you under normal circumstances would come back in town, but you guys have 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 been living under such unique circumstances these last few months, and I really feel for this senior class. Um, what what's what's on your mind this week as as you think about what commencement is kind of usually supposed to be like, and then and then what it what your class is is going through. Yeah, we're definitely all a little bit sad, and you know, crossing our fingers that. Um, because it's virtual, maybe this will force us to have a reunion, uh, you know, a year down the line and we can all come back and kind of celebrate and use that time to reconnect. So um, I'm pretty, I was very sad about it at first. I've had a few months um, in the real world to kind of um, take that in and, and realize that um, I'm not going to have that in-person graduation, but I've been using the time for something important. So um, it's all really feels like it happened for a reason for me at least. Um, but I do hope that there will be a celebration later in person so I can make my way back to Eugene, Oregon. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, the, the relationships you guys form, you know, I talked about being envious of Satu's uh, experience kind of uh, and traveling. I'm, I'm so envious of all you guys and the team experience you have because those relationships you guys form just last forever and, the, and they're deeper than, than uh, most any other relationships you'll have in your life. So um, I'm, I'm sure you guys will make that happen. Congratulations again, and best of luck uh, in these coming months, and, and, and welcome to, uh, you are a fellow University of Oregon alum, as am I, so welcome to the club. Thank you so much. Awesome, and thanks to all three of the student athletes who joined us tonight. Thanks for all of you who, uh, who tuned in. Like I said, I thought that time was gonna fly by, and it sure felt like it, it flew by, but um, just three really impressive student athletes who just attacked their academics so they could finish in a timely fashion, um, a, a, as well as being accomplished in their, in their various disciplines. And i um, just so proud of all three of them. And um, I think, you know, for, for all the women's basketball fans I, out there, I think I can speak for you. We just can't wait to watch Satu. Uh, she gets going uh, as the WNBA, WNBA season here gets going. And, and with Verone gearing up uh, to, to get back to football workouts, that's incredibly exciting. Uh, and Lily's off doing big things now that she's an alum off in the real world. So, uh, th and thanks again uh, to, to everybody in, in the JQA staff um, because graduation, um, I, I don't want to say it doesn't happen without you guys, but I think the path for a lot of these student athletes would be a lot more difficult um, in terms of balancing everything, in terms of time management. Um, so this St Steve Stoll, Dietrich, all you guys over there at, at the JQA Center, uh, Janine and Jen and all you guys, thanks so much. Um, for all you do for the student athlete community because it's just it's just awesome to get them to this finish line that we all crossed uh, that they all crossed uh, last week with the end of spring term again some of them still have a little bit of work to do but a mere formality uh, for those guys so congratulations to all of our graduates thanks to all you guys for tuning in to another happy hour with the ducks this was really fun really special to get to talk to some student athletes hopefully we will see you again next week <laughs>